I've been meaning to try out the Xbox Cloud Gaming for ages and I finally decided to give Team Green a chance. Now the reason I've been so hesitant uh, to try it is because first of all I have a PC and didn't really need to do cloud gaming and second of all I didn't know what to expect so I'm coming at it having no idea what, what it really is uh, and if it's actually worth it. I also got a brand new M2 MacBook Air and I thought you know what this is perfect timing because let's face it we all know that Mac, Mac OS sucks at gaming for the most part. I mean, it's pretty much a given that you don't buy an Apple computer of any sort for gaming, right? Well, what if something happens to the PC or I'm traveling somewhere with my laptop and I get bored or I just want to play some serious video gaming sitting at the table in my kitchen? I think probably the best choice in situations like these is cloud gaming and Xbox cloud gaming is what I wanted to try. So I was so eager and ready to fire up some games until I checked out the compatibility list of the Xbox cloud gaming and I saw no mentioning of uh, Mac OS. It's funny because the iPhone and iPad are mentioned but not Mac OS. And I could certainly go with the phone, right? Because both Android and iPhones are supported. The problem is that the viewing experience is not ideal and at best you're gonna end up having a subpar gaming experience on your phone. And I already had low expectations uh, for cloud gaming so playing on my phone just wouldn't be immersive and engaging at all. But to my surprise I was able to run the Xbox cloud gaming on the M2 MacBook Air with no problems. I mean, there are issues that I'll get to in a sec, but if you want to try it, just make sure that you use Safari and not any other browser, because Safari is the fastest browser on your Mac because of the way it works natively on your device. So right off the bat, I noticed that while there are many AAA games on Xbox Cloud Gaming, uh, it's still limited compared to what you'd normally get on other platforms and it's hard to find the latest titles. And as soon as you start a game, you realize you need to have a controller connected to your laptop. For example, I tried the DualShock 4 controller on PS4 and it works just fine. The catch here is that all the prompts that you get while playing these games are for an Xbox controller. So you just need to learn uh, what each button on your controller corresponds to an Xbox controller. It can get annoying, but it didn't stop me from having fun playing these games. So I think if I wanted to describe my experience, the best way I can put it is that it feels like I'm watching some um, something on satellite TV and from time to time I get some artifacts and noise. And some other times it feels like I'm watching uh, some content on YouTube and occasionally the quality drops to a lower level. And that means that while the MacBook Air's specs play a role in how smooth the gameplay is, the real deal is how fast your internet connection is. And even more important than that is the connection stability. So basically how reliable the connection is. The problem is that um, you're gonna use Wi-Fi and that means that it's not as reliable as wired connection and even the frequency band of your Wi-Fi router plays an important role. And you wanna make sure that uh, you're using the five gigahertz, not 2.4 gigahertz if your Wi-Fi uh, device supports dual band frequency. If you're using something like Google Wi-Fi, then you don't need to do anything as it'll automatically switch. Just make sure you're not sitting too far away from your Wi-Fi router. Because otherwise your MacBook Air is gonna automatically choose the 2.4 gigahertz and that's because it has a bigger range than 5 gigahertz frequency and if you want to know uh, which frequency your MacBook is connected to just hold the option key and click on the uh, Wi-Fi icon in the menu bar then you can see it in the middle the actual frequency of the uh, router your laptop is connected to. Playing first person shooter games I was really surprised at how let's say beyond functional cloud gaming is and in fact I had a really good time playing these games but I didn't notice that uh, not all games uh, give you the same experience because some of them run just uh, fine but you know I could definitely see a struggle here with some other games and in terms of input lag which is actually very crucial when playing first person shooter games I wouldn't want to play multiplayer games because uh, the lag's still noticeable I mean think about it when you're playing a game on your PC and you press a button then the lag is mostly limited uh, to your peripheral sending the signal to your computer, be it a wired or wireless setup. But in this case, the moment you press a button on the controller, not only does the signal need to be received by the laptop first, but also the signal has to be sent to the cloud server, which is where the actual game is running. And then you need to wait for the response from the server uh, to acknowledge that yes, this button was pressed. So as you can see, when it comes to cloud gaming, uh, the input lag is not optimal, but it is what it is. And if you don't take it too seriously, you can have a good time uh, playing some of these games.
Now, besides a lower quality and the input lag compared to what you get natively on a console or PC, what's frustrating is that sometimes a really fast and reliable connection won't cut it. I mean, Microsoft recommends 20 megabits per second for gaming on a Windows machine, so I presume it would have been the same for Mac had they actually officially supported it. But I have a 600 meg fiber optic connection and still some weird stuff kept happening. For example, sometimes the screen would just freeze uh, while the game was actually running so I could move around and do stuff because I could hear it, uh, but I just couldn't see it. And this has been the most frustrating part so far. And there were also a couple times where um, my game just froze. Either way, the only solution for me has been to exit the game and start over. And by the way, uh, when you boot up a game, uh, always check the settings to see if uh, there is an option for quality and performance. And if there is one, always go for performance because the performance is already uh, hugely affected by the input lag and other things. So hopefully this will improve it just a little. Oh, that's going to be too many steps. Gets the whistle on the trap wall. just about a minute into this first quarter. So to sum up, I think there is no doubt that cloud gaming is here to stay. And even though the Xbox cloud gaming is still on beta, it's worth uh, trying it out on M2 MacBook Air, but you just need to accept the fact that you'll experience some stutter, screen freeze, and potentially other problems. Uh, and you won't have access to a lot of games that you would otherwise easily have access to if you had a Windows laptop. Uh, and it's far better to know that you have access to these games on your MacBook Air laptop than thinking that you're completely hopeless just because uh, you have a MacBook. And you just need to lower your expectations. So if you're playing a game like Forza Horizon 5, don't expect to have the same experience when playing it on a high-end PC uh, in terms of both graphics and performance. And while technically you're playing at full HD, what you'll see will most likely uh, look like a 720p stream. And as I said before, uh, to minimize the stutter, just remember to use the 5 GHz frequency of your router. And finally, let's not forget that your location plays a huge role in how smooth the game runs. The closer you are to Microsoft Azure servers, the less overall latency you should experience.